So I'm very useful today because I just have to do the MC. There's lots of great people going to speak to you this morning. And to start you off, I'm delighted to welcome our first speaker, Mr. Lawrence Crowley, who will be reflecting on the establishment of the Irish Hospice Foundation in 1986. So Mr. Crowley, a key figure in Ireland's financial scene, played an important role in the early years of the Irish Hospice Foundation. Working alongside our, some of our fellow board members here today and our founder, Dr. Mary Redmond. So fundraising in the 1980s was a challenge, much like it is today. But Mr. Crowley and their committee threw themselves into the work with an array of projects and events which enabled the IHF to meet their tough goals. So to tell you more about these early years, I'd like to invite Mr. Crowley to speak. Thank you very much, Sharon, for that introduction. I only recognize bits of myself. <laughs> uh, on Taoiseach, uh, you're ex extremely welcome in joining the Hospice Foundation today. Uh, we know you have a few things on your plate, and thanks for taking time out to do this for us. In 2016, as Sharon has said, the Hospice Foundation celebrates a major milestone as it marks the 30th anniversary of enhancing end-of-life care for the people of Ireland. Thank you. It adopted the powerful vision that no one should face death or bereavement without the, the care and support they need. And that has stood the test of time, uh, that vision for the uh, IHF. The remarkable foundation which has brought about major changes in the end-of-life care was the vision of the late Dr. Mary Redmond, a most inspirational woman. Uh, she was inspired to establish the IHF following the death of her father at uh, Harold's Cross in 1985. At that time, there was only one hospice in Ireland. Dr. Redmond ensured that further hospices would be built right across the, uh, the country uh, because she felt so strongly that hospice care should be available for all. The Hospice Foundation was set up in April 1986. At its core was the philosophy that the life of a dying person should be made worth living to the end so that peaceful death becomes an achievement, not a defeat. This still remains the core philosophy of the Irish Hospice Foundation. <clears throat> One of the first issues which the foundation had identified <clears throat> was that the purpose of hospitals was to treat and cure patients and return them to their family and their homes. Dealing with terminally ill patients was in some cases regarded <coughs> as being a secondary part of the health service that they were offering and not career enhancing. Thus the IHF took up the cause of convincing the medical profession in its most general sense that care of the terminally ill was a very important role in life. As a result, an increasing number of hospitals provide dedicated space for those who are terminally ill and their families can deal with the tragedy they are facing with dignity and peace. In addition, of course, there has been a significant uh, increase in the number of dedicated hospices. A further early development was the decision to set up the home team, the home care teams who provide hospice care to terminally ill people who wish to die in their own homes. Bereavement support was pioneered under the leadership of the late Therese Brady. Each year, more than 3,000 people are being trained in the provision of bereavement support. The role of the foundation then and now has been to identify areas of need and then offer strategic leadership and funding, leading to the launch of independent services. In this way, the IHF has established itself as a pioneer and a key driver in the development of better end of life and palliative care in Ireland. 
the bravery, courage and forward thinking of Mary Redmond and those who had the foresight to back her led to the extension of better care to many thousands of people at the end of their lives. But the journey doesn't end here. Over the last 30 years, the Foundation has achieved more than we could have imagined when it was founded. And in a way, this journey is still in its early stages. Right now, every person in Ireland can expect to have a dignified death. Not everybody gets to achieve the type of death they want. But everyone deserves to die with dignity and comfort. And the Irish Hospice Foundation, as it marks its 30th anniversary, continues to stride towards this goal. In conclusion, can I thank the many people who over the last 30 years have devoted so much of their time and their energy to making life worth living to the end, so that a peaceful death becomes an achievement, not a defeat. Thank you.